to my channel. I am the introvert who needs a little socialization. Can we talk? Can we talk about it? And let me add, everything I say is alleged, my opinion, and for entertainment purposes only. Let's get into this episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 8. I don't know what episode it is. Okay. We got Feisty Nell cussing and fussing with the children because she don't want to do counseling with Dr. Francis. She just wants the kids to pay her her money back. Nell says counseling is for the birds, pretty much. She hollering and fussing with Chris because she thinks it's them and not her. Anyway, Nell, counseling is to get tools to handle situations in a better way. And Nell, you could use a better way of handling your children. Outside of it, turn it into a spitfire dragon fight when you talking to your grown children, that you should be able to conversate with them. Now, listen, Nell, I'm not coming down on you because I get it. Wife, mother, household, everything falls on your shoulder. So it's like, <laughs> I ain't got time to communicate with y'all. I'm just going to yell at y'all and tell y'all what, what I need y'all to do. Okay, I get it now. I get it. It's frustrating, so I get it. But get the counseling so you don't have to bust a blood vessel somewhere okay yelling at these kids and your husband then we got the next scene with marso talking to trish's husband i think his name is marquez or something like that i'm just gonna go on ahead and say this trish's husband is the prime example of that man that say black women uh is too masculine you know he from that red pill sector okay he's got all these complaints about the next man stepping up to take care and participate in raising of his children. Meanwhile, he's walked away from his family because of what? We ain't get to hear that reason, okay? Of why he left. But you can sit up there and tell Marceau and make Trish look like a harlot, much like Martell is doing, okay? But what the hell you do? You mad because your daughter's happy around Ken? Is that the real reason? Let me tell you something. As a daughter who wanted her father who was around, but not around, if you know what I mean, to be there for her. Yes, your daughter said that from her heart. She didn't get that from her mother. That was from her heart. She's tired of the broken promises. Tired of your broken promises, promises. Anyway. And you now live in Atlanta? Boy, bye. You still stuck at 18 years old and holding on to Trish and whatever y'all went through when y'all was young. Like, you have no authority over Trisha's life no more. Although, the way she be acting sometimes, it seems like you do. And um, Marceau, kudos to you, okay, for lambasting this man and letting him know that he shouldn't have left his family if he don't want all these things that Ken is doing with his children. But, but let me say, I caught what you said in your confessionals. In your confessionals, one... You said about Trish's husband being the male. Boy, bye. There is no comparison. And there you go in other people's business. But the minute somebody talk about you and Trish and them kids, it's a problem. You just talk to be talking. That's why Mel give it to you straight when she come at you. And two, your comment about staying with your family, basically for the kids and love ain't got nothing to do with it. You said a lot there and we do see it every time you and Tisha step on that camera we see it I'm just saying then we have this quick short scene with Nell and Mel uh Nell goes over to Mel house um can I just say something did something happen in the conversation with Nell and Mel uh because at some point it looked like Nell didn't want to engage in any conversation with Mel she was just like mm-hmm mm -hmm. or was it just me Nell talks about the kids and then want her to go to counseling with them. But Nell just wants the children to pay her her damn money back. She gets real emotional because it's affecting her finances. Um, Nell said the kids said, you know, she be over talking them and do and did. Mel said, when it comes to the kids, you're the bad cop and Chris is the good cop. Mel advises Nell to go to counseling um, to get some tools to be able to speak to her children in a constructive way. You know, this was a short scene. Um, Mel, I hope you, you know, creating your exit plan uh, because uh, we haven't seen you in many scenes this season. Okay? Then we move on to Dr. Francis. He's on his way to the Fletchers and Nell is nervous and taking it out on Chris. So Lance, um, Nell's oldest son goes first and he was expressing himself. Now, I'm just saying, to me, it was like, although he was expressing himself, it seemed like he was on eggshells because he knew at any moment that Nell was going to explode, okay? While she sat there, it looked like she was holding her tongue. 
because they had company, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and Lance was just saying that Nell, you know, Lance was saying that Nell listens, but she don't listen to listen. She listens to respond. So Dr. Francis hit the nail on the head of Nell. Although she's a spitfire, she is very delicate. And as I mentioned earlier, I kind of get Nell, you know, when you're a business owner, a wife, a mother, taking the care of the household. Because although you got a husband, you know, everything falls on the mom or the wife. Okay. I don't care what nobody said. Okay. Anyway, uh, Dr. Francis has her do an exercise where she's tell where she tells each of her children um, one nice thing about them. And Nell goes down the line. Nell goes down the line and, you know, she talks to all the children. Um, she gets emotional and um, basically she understands the assignment. Dr. Francis said you have to feed your children with positivity in order for them to grow. Don't quote me, but he said something like that. And not knock them down and tell them what they ain't and what they are doing. And I can only say that, you know, with Nell, it's learned behavior. Somebody probably and most likely did it to her. You know, and at the end, all the children were crying. Like they really needed Nell to say those things to them. You know, the water that feeds that drying root. So Dr. Francis should have had her say something to Chris because I would have loved to have seen that too. Because he just sits by quiet and somber. But I'm sure they edited out some stuff. I'm sure. So Nell was hugging Dr. Francis like he saved her life, okay? She was like, she gets it. Uh, Dr. Francis, uh, then we have the scene with Trisha and Marquis, Marquez, absent father, okay? They sit down to talk. And to me, it was a very awkward scene. Of course, with Trish, she's always tight-lipped and just looking weird. Uh, Trish, do you still want this man or are you scared of him? Because it was given both. I didn't like how you didn't stand up for Ken with all that crap he was talking about. Ken, you know, throwing sly shots about him being a muscle man and all this other crap. And, you know, you really should have stepped up and told him, like, this man has stepped up and have done what you haven't been doing. Okay. Um, At the end of the day, go get a damn divorce mm -hmm. that the man wants you to go have on, okay? Like, why is he here? Alvin. Do y'all know what movie that's from? This was a wasted scene. I don't know where Love and Marriage Huntsville is going, but that's all I got, y'all. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know when my next video comes out, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.